Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put a step-by-step -step guide together today, just run you through a performance fault on this 2014 Land Rover Freelander 2, and it's the 2.2 diesel. Now, the issue we're having with this one, we've got the yellow engine warning light on the dash, you've got the restricted performance message coming up, um, it's permanently in limp mode, it's not boosting at all. Um, this is an auto, um, I can't get it over about 40 mile an hour, so it's really, really struggling. Now, I'll just run you through um, the fault codes that we've got stored on the diagnostic machine, then I'll run you through what the actual fault is and how to replace it. Um, just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. So we're using this top down diagnostic machine that we've had for a few weeks now. Still been fairly impressed with this and it's done a lot of stuff that we've asked of it so far. So I'll just run you through. I've just done a I'll just do a quick smart scan, just speed through that, but we basically scan every ECU. And then we'll just run you through the fault codes that we've got. Right, so it's done a full scan there. The main ones we're going to be looking into tonight is the engine control module faults. It has got a couple of faults in the uh, AC system there. But if we go into the engine control module, the faults that we've got basically got the all relating to the turbocharger. You can see we've got P2263 there, P226B, P259E and P0046. But they're all relating to turbocharger issues. So I'll just show you what the actual issue is now, and then we'll run through how to replace it. So the main issue that we've got, now these, this is basically the actuator for the turbo itself. Now some people will only actually want to fit a full turbocharger, which strictly is the better way to do it. These do come sort of configured to the turbocharger, so it is a lot better if you can fit them with a the turbo. Um, but obviously it's a lot cheaper to just get the actual unit itself and replace it. So I've done quite a few of these on the transits now. They seem to be quite a common issue. Um, well, if you check out the links in the description below, I'll put a link to one of these and where you can get it from as well. Uh, but we'll just get it up in the air now. I'll just show you where it's located and how to fix it, or how to replace it. Just for now, before um, I'll not clear the codes out or anything, we'll just turn the ignition off now and then we'll run through just clearing the codes and everything once it's been done. And we'll just see if there's a procedure in there to uh, just tell it it's had the uh, turbo replaced as well. Right, so if you just come up from underneath the driver's sort of wheel and up on the arch there, you just see behind the power steering pipes, this is the back edge of the actuator there with the connector on it and then if you just come from the other side we can see it a little bit clearer just up from underneath in the center there we've basically got the actual you can see the full actuator there uh, just try to point out you've got some eight mil bolts there's three eight mil bolts holding it on and then you've got like a c-clip that actually holds the arm on there the actuator arm on so what i'll do is I'll just start with i'll just show you getting the connector off how you get that off and then we'll try and mount the camera up to show you undoing the other bolts and getting the actual actuator itself off. So the first step to getting the clip off, the connector off, sorry, you just got the orange clip on the back of it and just basically need to pull that to the back. And once you've got that out, you can get like a little pick, flick the top edge up there sort of flick that, lift that open and should be able to pull it off. So we'll just try to do that and film it now. Right, now we've got the connector off. We'll try and mount the camera up while we undo them. We'll get the C-clip off first and then we'll undo the 8mm bolts. Just to give a little bit better access as well, I'm just going to undo the under tray. See the under tray is just held on with four bolts, two at the back there and two at the front. So it's really straightforward to get down.
Um, so that's the old actuator off now. So it wasn't too bad a job to do. A little bit fiddly. Um, used a couple of different tools there just to get in. Um, but for the little C-clip there, I just want a, a pair of pliers. If you can't quite grip it, sometimes you can get a little flat-bladed screwdri screwdriver just in the gap and sort of twist it against the inner piece and that'll pop it back. But fine with a pair of pliers, you can sort of keep hold of it as you pull it back so you don't lose it, that's all. Um, but yeah, just use, use the battery ratchet for one of the bolts it's real nice and easy just saves saves any awkwardness there just use a stubby ratchet for one of them and then to use a ratchet eight mil for one of the other ones so but all we're going to do now is just had a quick look just compare the new one to the old one just make sure that the actuator is sat in the same position i'll just show you you can just see that the arms there are sat in the same position so i just want to make sure that it wasn't miles out or anything like that so but at this stage now we can just fly through putting it back together and then we'll run you through just clearing the fold codes giving it a run i'll just see if there's any options on there to say it's safe it's had one or not and um, we'll give it a run and just make sure it's fixed the fold so we'll just fly through putting it back together now Right, so that's the unit all fitted back into place now the connectors back on and put the fork arm back on as well now some of the bolts are a little bit fiddly to get you just see some of them i couldn't get in with the ratchet so i had to get the sort of ratchet spanner on there well it's not too bad to do really all we'll do now is just drop it back down clear the fault codes and make sure it's definitely fixed the fault so. Right, so we're going to go back into the engine ECU now. And then we'll just basically clear, just make sure, just see if anything else has thrown up with having it disconnected. And it's still the same codes in there, so see if we can clear all the codes now. See that it's allowed us to clear the codes out. Before the issue was having, I'd clear the codes out and basically they would come straight back in it. Uh, it wouldn't even allow me to, it wouldn't actually allow me to clear two of them, they'd come straight back. But as soon as I struck it back up, two would come straight back into it. So now I've had a bit of, look, of a look about, and uh, there are quite a few um, slight options. Uh, just go back into there. There are quite a few special functions available. Um, I've had a bit of a scan around. I can't actually see one to say that it's had the turbo actuator replaced. There might be an option on there. Um, but uh, I'm just going to give it, strike it up now, just see if the faults stay out. We'll give it a run down the road and just see, make sure it's uh, definitely fixed the fault. You can see just striking it up. The fault code hasn't come on, which is a good sign. As I said before, straight away, it was just logging that fault as soon as it had been um, turned off and the ignition back on. So just to prove it on the diagnostic machine as well, I'll just do, I'll just do a scan. I'll just do a scan with the machine again as well, just with the ignition on, just before taking it out. Right, so you can see after the scan, the engine control module is clean now. It's quite nice. I'm really impressed with this top down scanner. Um, to do like this full scan on the snap-on machine does take quite a bit of time. As you can see, doing that full scan on this, it hasn't really took hardly any time at all. Um, obviously, something like this, a Land Rover, there's quite a lot of ECUs to run through. So, but it's really nice the way that it does it. It just it quickly highlights it. If there's an issue, it's red, and you can just quickly enter the ECU um, that, that's highlighted. So, it's a really nice bit of kit to use. Um, but other than that now, I'm just going to give it a quick road test and then we'll just let you know it's definitely fixed the fault. Right, so I've just got back from a five mile road test. It's now running absolutely spot on. We've had no fault lights come up 
boosting fine, all the performance is back. Um, just put the top down scanner on it again, done a full code scan, just to make sure, make sure. It, not all folk fault codes log, um, put a light on the dash. So it's always worth just checking just to make sure it hasn't come up with any issues. It hasn't come up with any issues about the position of it or anything like that. So it looks like we don't actually need to configure it or anything like that so uh, but yeah i just thought i'd put the video together in case it helps anyone in the same situation obviously it's going to work out a lot cheaper to replace this section of the turbo just the electronic actuator if it's only that that's at fault rather than fitting the whole turbo and obviously it's a lot easier to replace this unit as well so but yeah uh, if you want if you're interested in one of these or the top don scanner or any of the tools used or anything like that just check out the description below and i'll put links in there um, but thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.